Hello, everyone. This is part two of the uh, collection of 36 under 36, the, thir the 36 uh, millennials that are uh, making a difference through compassion and their activism and their art to bring people closer to, to Judaism, to uh, foster understanding between different cultures and peoples and uh, we featured six uh, last time and uh, let's let's go take a look at uh, some others some other very worthy uh, people let's take a look there's some other worthy uh, young people that are that know that are trying to make a difference let's take a look right now this is in the field of activism this is, uh, we can't, we can't get everybody, so we're, we'll take a few people here. This person is Michael Riedler, 26, this young, young man here. Michael Riedler, 26, helping the most vulnerable members of Israeli society. Kolnaarim.org, Kolnaarim. Growing up in Englewood, New Jersey, Riedler thought he would become a surgeon because he wanted to help people. Then, while studying in Israel a, de a decade ago, he volunteered on a summer program at a children's home, an orphanage that accepts children unable to live with their families, serving as, quote, a friend for at-risk kids and helping them break the cycle of distress. Inspired by his work, he decided to study finance at NYU so he could pay for his vision of summer camp programs for, at, quote, every children's home in Israel, giving a spiritual boost to the most vulnerable, vulnerable members of the society. The result is Kalhana Arim, Voice of the Youth, a, a humanitarian organization he helped to develop eight years ago with college student volunteers Ezra Gantonik and Sarah Struhl. Each year, Riedler and a handful of, of volunteers interview high school students to apply to serve for a month at foster homes in Israel. The summer schedule includes sports, tours, and classes. Otherwise, he said, the kids would have no activities to fill their summer vacations. Over the years, the number of participating participating facilities in Israel has grown from one to four. Some 350 volunteers have worked with, quote, at least a thousand young residents at, of the home, said Riedler, who works at a hedge fund. The organization's budget comes from the $2,900 that each volunteer pays to take part and from Riedler's own pocket. His long-range goal is to expand to, quote, every children's home in Israel. His long-range goal, quote, to establish a camp at every children's home in the world. Quote, I want to care for every child at risk in the world, he said. Sweet role model. A, a book that had the, the greatest effect on Riedler is Michael D'Antonio's 2007 biography of Milton Hershey, the philanthropic founder of the Hershey Chocolate Corporation, who, with no children of his own, established the Hershey Industrial School, now known as the Milton Hershey School, a facility for orphan boys. Quote, that model of helping youth has been a big influence in my life, Riedler said. This is by Steve Lipman. So, this is Michael Riedler, 26. You have another one, another. Shira, another young person that's working to help the situation in the world. Shira Berkowitz, 33. Fighting Abuse with Policy, Jewish Sacred Spaces.org. The seeds for Shira Berkowitz, Shira Berkowitz's organization 
were planted in rural, rural Minnesota at the breakfast table of a devout Lutheran family. The table belonged to Victor V.S., trainer of a, of a national child protection training center and an expert in addressing child abuse in small, in small communities. During the summer of 2013, Berkowitz, who was Orthodox, lived with B.S. and his family in order to absorb everything she could about systematically preventing abuse. Quote, we'd sit at the breakfast table and start brainstorming, we called Berkowitz. Here is Sherry Berkowitz over here. We'd sit at, a, at the breakfast table and start brainstorming, said Berkowitz. Who, has a, who was a law student at Benjamin N. Cordoza law, School of Law at the time. The summer experiences with V.S. was a legal internship. Quote, I remember saying, Victor, what would it look like if we did all this in the Jewish community? Sacred Space is a nonprofit that aids institutions across the broader Jewish community, communal landscape is in developing policies to prevent institutional abuse and properly handle it when it occurs is the realization of that dream. Launched last July, the initiative aims to train Jewish community professionals around the world about child protection policies. Policies child protection policies, best practices, and create child protection policies, best practices, and boundary violations. The end goal is to create an accreditation system for the Jewish community. Unlike other alternatives that have sprung up to address the problems, sacred spaces is not focused on helping victims or exposing offenders. It is aimed at reshaping institutions. Quote, I'm convinced that the answer is in policies, said Berkowitz, who is a behavioral psychologist, attorney, and author of the forthcoming book, Preventing and Responding to Child Abuse a policy guide for synagogue professionals and lay leaders. When an issue comes up, people are scrambling to come up with fixes. If we had a code, just like a fire safety code, our community could start to think about the issue of abuse in a different way. Organizations, she said, are desperate for information. 82% of 110 synagogue youth directors she surveyed from across the denominational spectrum in 2013 had no training in preventing child sexual abuse. Quote, I realized that this was bigger than me. She knows how to throw a party. So this is Shira Berkowitz. Shira Berkowitz. Berkowitz. She knows how to throw a party. Berkowitz holded her 30th birthday party at Orchard Beach in the Bronx. Festivities began with sunrise yoga, followed by a musical minion, and ending with a drum circle. She hopes her, her book party will include indoor sky driving, indoor skydiving, or trapezing. So that's Shira Berkowitz. Our next millennial that is mentioned here is an activist called, he's an artist, Daniel Turner, 30, preserving memory and the father's legacy. DanielTurner.com, at Daniel Turner. Growing up in Clinton Hill, Brooklyn, Daniel Turner was a little different than his peers. The 30-year-old father, Fred Turner, is a Holocaust survivor who lived through numerous concentration camps 
and was significantly older than his friend's parents. Daniel is also Colombian and was adopted at birth. Quote, as a kid, these things that marked me as different weren't much fun. But as I got older, I realized they made my family pretty exceptional, said Turner. Drawn to photography since he was young, Turner began photographing his father going about his everyday life as a hobby. As a young artist living with an aging Holocaust survivor, I recognize what a unique and important position I'm in to offer testimony in this way, said Turner, who went on to study photography at Bard College and at Jerusalem's Bezalel Academy of Arts and Design. Quote, I try and capture my father in typical scenes like shaving, eating, and gardening, where his fragility is evident. Turner has also photographed his father, who has always been a willing participant, who has always been a willing participant going about his work as a painter, creating elaborate masks. Quote, my father speaks so much about the Holocaust to school children and organizations, but I wanted to capture what he looked like, just living his normal life, with the trauma and memory of the Holocaust always just under the surface. Turner accompanied his father to Dachau in 2015 for the 70th anniversary of the camp's liberation. Quote, as an artist, I grapple with the proper way to commemorate trauma, and I don't know that there's any one way to achieve it properly. As his father has aged, Turner's work has taken on a new urgency. Quote, one of the goals of my work is to explore how we can pass on knowledge and memory to younger generations, he said. Quote, I know my work won't end after my father is gone because my perspective as an artist will evolve and there will be always, and there will always be unanswered questions about how to preserve the memory and legacy of the Holocaust. Read all about it. Turner could fit his entire body into a Village Voice newsstand. Tova Ross. Tova Ross, she's the, art, the writer. Our next artist shaping things for the good in the world is Ora Fruchter, 32, an, ex an existential puppeteer. Orafruchter.com. Ora Fruchter, a puppeteer, director, performer, and Jewish educator, is, inter is interested in the intersection of two things that wouldn't put, that most wouldn't put together, spirituality and puppets. Quote, quote, good puppetry has everything to do with breathing, said, Brooklyn, said the Brooklyn-based artist. Quote, you give your breath to make a puppet live and breathe. Fruchter, who discovered puppeteering as a profession, as a theater major at the University of Maryland, has since used this magical power to inspire young and old audiences alike. She founded and directs two educational theater companies, Yellow Sneaker Puppets, which teaches puppetry and creative text study workshops to students and educators, and Doppelscope, a theater company that performs interactive shows with educational content. The company's most recent show, Gruff, is a, com is a comedy echo musical that urges audiences to work to slow climate change. 
All of her shows tackle larger issues that families or just people want to think about together. Quote, it's a very existential company, she said. There's a common theme through all of this. Things are scary. Things are scary. Things are dark. How can we explore that through comedy in a way that brings us together? As a Jewish educator, Fruchter uses a method called object theater, quote, object theater, to engage children in Torah studies. Using this approach, she casts objects as a character. For example, she casts Moses as a sponge and uses the object as a springboard for deep discussion. I ask the kids, quote, why do you think Moses is a sponge? I hear back the most amazing answers. She works, she works with several synagogues. These are the synagogues that she works with. Develop engaging lesson plans that incorporate visual and performing arts into the curriculum. Creating a community through theater has helped her think about the connectedness of the Jewish community in a deeper way, she said. Quote, every member of an audience is part of a community. Everyone is having a shared experience, she said. Quote, I'm learning how to take advantage of that in the best way in order to help members of a community connect with one another. With w I'm learning how to take advantage of that in the best way in order to help members of the community connect with one another. The motto that inspires her work, quote, I want to respect the intelligence of children and the whimsy of adults. Shadow Puppet Chuppa. At her recent marriage ceremony, several handcrafted shadow puppets made an appearance. The week before her wedding, she de designed a shadow show, which her friends performed right before she walked down the aisle. The week before her wedding, she designed a shadow show, which her friends performed right before she walked down the aisle. That's by Hannah Dreyfus. So that is Ora Fruchter, 32. Now we have Or Itzkovich, 29, ad advocating for Israel through art. Facebook.com, Face of Israel. Or Itzkovich, an Israeli American undergrad at Baruch College, was recently accosted on the subway near Times Square by two Middle Eastern men who heard him speaking Hebrew. His years of martial arts training as a child allowed him to prevent the incident from escalating. Still, what happened bothered him deeply. Quote, the event changed my perspective, said Itzkovitz, who grew up in a secular family in Tel Aviv. Quote, I wasn't mad at those kids. They don't know anything about Israel. But people need to get to know the truth about who we are. Today, Iskovitz is reshaping people's perceptions, or rather, misperceptions about Israel through art. In May 2016, he launched, quote, he launched Faces of Israel, a photographic exhibition that displays the multi-layered diversity of Israeli society, from an Arab nurse to a young Israeli Bedouin firefighter, to a gay couple in Tel Aviv. Itzkovitz's subject Itzkovitz's subject suggests the project aims Iskovitz, Iskovitz's subject suggests the project aims Itzkovitz's subject suggests the project's aims to educate skeptics of Israel by showing a side of the country many don't see. Quote, what bothers me the most 
is what people don't know, he said. Quote, I want to show that this is not the society of occupiers. It is a society of people. On campus, Iskovich experienced the push towards BDS, a movement advocating boycott, divest, and sanctions against Israel. He hopes his art can combat the movement. We want to fight back in a very apolitical way, he said. After a successful exhibition of the photographs at Baruch, Itzkovich has brought the show to other college campuses, including NYU and Columbia. He plans to take the exhibit to at least 20 more college campuses next semester. Growing up, he was neighbors with the late Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, whom he called, quote, one of my heroes. Itzkovitz served in the Israeli Defense Forces, first in a combat unit and later after injuring his back during the War of Lebanon as a mentor to new soldiers. The injury did not leave him bitter. Quote, the first thing you do in a hard situation is introduce yourself, he said. Reach out and shake the other person's hand. Rock and roll. In April, Itzkovitz helped organize a Shlomo R.C. concert at Madison Square Garden to benefit ORT, ORT, an organization that brings educational and vocational programs to privileged, to underprivileged children in 37 countries. An organization that brings educational and vocational programs to underprivileged children in 37 countries. So that is Or Itz Itzkovich, 29, advocating for Israel through art. Facebook.com slash Face of Israel. The next millennial activist doing what he can to help the world better the world is Ken Kendall Pinkney, 30. Telling the story of Jews of color, kaleidoscopejews.org. A native of the Dallas area, a childhood member of an, e an, of an evangelical Christian, black, uh, quote, black megachurch, Kendall Pinkney was a member of a youth choir whose rector chose Adon Olam, the Hebrew hymn, as part of the singer's repertoire. Quote, we didn't get the chetz, the guttural letter right. We didn't get the chetz, the guttural letter right. He said, the director explained the words meaning, the director explained the words meaning that, and the music piqued my curiosity, Pinkney said. We didn't get the chetz right, the chetz, that's the Hebrew letter, the guttural letter right, he said. The director explained the word's meanings. That and the music piqued my curiosity, Pinkney said. More than two decades later, after he left Christianity and spent, and spent a year at Hebrew University and embarked on an intensive study of Judaism, Pinkney is a Hebrew-speaking, kippah-wearing, kosher-keeping, bracha-making convert. Bracha-making convert about to enter rabbinical school at the Jewish Theological Seminary. Bracha-making means he makes a blessing before he eats. Whatever, whatever food he eats, he makes a blessing. So he's a... Is a so Pinkney is a Hebrew-speaking, kippah-wearing, kosher-keeping, bracha-making convert about to enter rabbinical school in at the Jewish Theological Seminary. And he is a founder and associate producer of Kaleidoscope Jews, a troupe of storytellers who relate the experiences of Jews from various non-Ashkenazic, non-white backgrounds 
The performers' audiences usually are Ashkenazic and white. The project earned him a spot as one of the inaugural You Are a Jews of the inaugural You Are a Jew V Nation Follow, Fellows, a year long fellowship in New York City that supports emerging leaders. Quote, no one else is, con is concentrating on the storytelling aspect of minorities within the Jewish community, said Pinckney, who majored in Jewish studies at Oberlin College, works as a Hebrew school teacher, tutor, and youth group leader, and lives in and leaves in no one else is concerned is concentrating on the storytelling aspect of minorities within the Jewish community said Pinckney who majored in Jewish studies at Oberlin College works as a Hebrew school teacher tutor and youth group leader and lives in Brooklyn Brooklyn's Prospect Heights neighborhood Quote, it's not ghettoizing himself and fellow, and fellow Jews of color, he said, of Kaleidoscope's work. Rather, it's expanding Jews' understanding and acceptance of each other. He now, he's now at work on a video about his conversion experience. Pinkney, who, who graduated from New York University's graduate musical theater, writing program was a member of the Union for Reform Judaism's Youth Professionals Community of Practice as well as a fellow at the LABA Laboratory for Jewish Culture, the LABA Laboratory for Jewish Culture. As a rabbi, Pinckney said he hopes to work on a college campus. Now, as part of his Davin hopping practice. He hopes worship services at several nearby synagogues. Adon Alum ad sung at the end of most of most Shabbat services remains one of his favorites. Quote, I always look forward to it, he said. By voracious reader, Pinkney's favorite books are Ruth. The Torah's archetypal convert, Edgar Keretz, suddenly a knock on the door. The Israeli writer's collection of short stories and the script of Thomas Stoppard's Arcadia about the relationships, the relationship between past and present. So that is Kendall Pinkney, 30, telling the stories of Jews of color. KaleidoscopeJews.org And we, this is another we can end off this segment with Sherry Sror 27 another millennial making a difference a model a model of resilience BeckyCan.com, Sherry Soror, B E C I C A N.com, at Sherry Soror. A, a high school graduate a decade ago, Soror, a resident of Brooklyn's Manhattan Beach neighborhood, was, quote, a regular teenager, an avid dancer with an eye on a career as a fashion designer. Then she got sick. Without warning, an autoimmune neurological disorder struck. Within two weeks, she lost complete mobility. She was, quote, basically paralyzed, without the ability to swallow, breathe, or speak on her own. She spent months in rehab. Sror, whose family has roots in Lebanon, and who had attended... Yeshiva of Flatbush said 
it took her two years to regain her physical strength and psychological equilibrium. She learned to navigate city life in a wheelchair and earned a degree, magna cum laude, magna cum laude, in health and psychology from Brooklyn College. Now she's spending her brand of spiritual, now she's spreading her brand of spiritual resistance through a nonprofit she called Because I Can, which aims to bring a never give up message to the Jewish community. In speeches around the greater New York area, she tells how she became sick and recovered, how she maintained her faith in God, and how her brush with death, quote, was a wake-up call. There's always a solution, said Sror, who works as a creative designer for kosher, koshermedia.com. In her spare time, she prints. In her spare time, she paints, visits the elderly at a nearby senior center, helps package meals for the HL Shabbat Kosher Foods Program, and has organized a Many Thanks Gala for Svardik Bikor Cholim. Even though I'm in a wheelchair, Schwar said, I can do anything. Sherry's Roar, 27. Marathoner. Soror decided to enter the half marathon part of the Disney Marathon near Orlando last year. Her brother-in-law, Sally, would push her wheelchair. No such pushing allowed because of safety concerns for other participants. Marathon officials said. She kept emailing the officials. Quote, I wasn't going to stop bothering them till they said yes. Finally, she, finally they agreed. With certain safety precautions, Sror and Sally started at the head of the pack. She wheeled the, the, the last half mile herself. A major, a major exertion raising $15,000 for Svartik Bikr Cholim. Will she keep marathoning? Quote, I'd love to. That's Sherry Sror, 27. Steve Lipman. This was written by Steve Lipman. So, we can finish the segment with Sherry's Roar. So, she, so these are a sampling of the, these young people that we featured here are a sampling of the young people 36, under 36, that are 